Welcome to the Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of the Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the special edition of The Miracle You, the Awakening Through Moments of Choice book series with Mary. Throughout the series, Mary will share with you her insights and feelings on our story that was shared in the book from my perspective. We know that what she has to share will enhance your experience reading the book. Let's get started. Here's Mary. Hi. And welcome to this episode of the Awakening Through Moments of Choice series. In this episode, I'll be talking about the channeling that was the next big thrust of Vince's journey that changed our life further. This should give you a deeper understanding from my perspective of our journey. And if you don't have the book yet, you can purchase it at Amazon using the link in the show notes. It wasn't too many days after our walk together at Vince's Mountain Home, which culminated in Vince saying, I must have a channeling. Can you arrange that? That we were on our way to meet with Aloria. I was sitting in the passenger seat feeling a new sense of freedom that I hadn't felt in a very long time. I looked over at Vince in a way I had never allowed myself to before. He was glowing just like the sun as we rode along the highway as it rounded and curved, lined by the green of the juniper trees, rooted in the red soil so common in this part of our country. My mom was sitting quietly in the back seat with her own thoughts and her own predictions of what was to come. Did she know what was to come? Will she play a part in the future is what I was wondering when I looked back at her beautiful porcelain skin and patrician features. Her eyes were closed, which was very common for her when she was in her inner world. Mom always seemed to have two ways of being, quiet or always expounding on various spiritual topics. Arriving at Aloria's was a reminder of how my journey to finding Vince started at her home, and the land was a sanctuary to all the broken hearts of humanity. Aloria had a special way of hearing the unseen and orchestrating healing and growth to all who crossed her doorstep. I'm not sure Vince fit that description, but I certainly did back in 2005. When we three entered her home, I just knew I had made the best recommendation for him to have his first channeling. This channeling had to be totally aligned for him, and as it turned out, for me. I knew the channel could only be her. I was very familiar with her home and with Aloria as she had been my mentor for the past 18 years. I would dutifully sit with her twice a year at every metaphysical fair she worked as she would open my eyes with energetic transmissions and on-point instructions and melt my hardened heart with her angelic paintings reflecting my essence that was locked away with a key seemingly thrown away. But this afternoon wasn't about me. It was about Vince. I watched him carefully as he graciously entered this world entirely foreign to him. By now I knew him well enough to know when he was doing something just for me, and this wasn't the case at all. He was here to discover for himself what I had been sharing. Was this world I was opening his eyes to really for him? I could see his busy mind working overtime with questions such as, Is this for me? Can I believe this? What if this is all made up? Am I a fool? Will this be the end of my relationship with Mary if absolutely nothing happens here today? I grabbed his hand and sat next to him at the dining room table with my mom and Aloria. 
We had tea and I listened, feeling enlivened as my mentor opened her heart and home to the man that meant so much to me and to the man that she knew had already changed my life. We three followed Aloria out of the great room, through the archway past the open foyer adorned with crystals, green plants, fresh flowers, and her paintings, and into her office, which was more like an atelier. You could feel all of Aloria in this room. Her essence was illustrated in all of her paintings, the colors she chose, down to the pillows on the couch we sat on. As Aloria centered herself, I looked intently at Vince to see how he was feeling and if he was still open and willing. He felt my eyes on him and gave me a brief, reassuring look, but not for long, as he was fixated on Aloria, watching her body ever so slightly change. Even her facial features almost imperceptibly changed as the energies filled her body and the room. The only other time I had experienced this type of physical change was the Tiburon channeling. Good afternoon, brother. We have waited a long time for this meeting. I snapped my head towards my mother to see if she was listening. We have waited a long time for this meeting? Excuse me, but what? I'd been to dozens and dozens of channelings alone and in groups, and I had not heard that before. I looked at Vince, who clearly did not see me anymore. It was as if all events, his mind, body, and soul, were locked and loaded for this exchange. His mind may have been made up that he was going to either discredit me or give me credit for opening his mind, but in that moment, he was fully engaged and nothing could have happened to in any way distract him. And Archangel Michael continued for a solid 40 minutes explaining how we come into this life choosing our parents for their belief systems, how we have our own divine intent or mission, and how we attract others with similar divine intents to come together to solve a problem and to be a piece in this earthly but cosmic puzzle of humanity. I was sitting there practically dumbfounded by the intensity and rush of words that were being gushed out of this small framed feminine body directed in rapid fire succession to this human who was having another step in his awakening in front of my eyes. By now, I was just sitting back, taking notes on a spiral-bound notebook and listening. In the first few minutes, Mom and I were welcomed and told like a parent telling a child that this meeting was for Vince. They were happy we were there, but there would be no interchange between us. I only accepted this because I had no choice. It was clear that there were no options. I glanced at my mom, who was just as obedient and sat with her eyes closed in her inner world, taking it all in. Vince was receiving and remembering from Archangel Michael, who is one of his guides, his mission to open hearts. He was being reminded why he was born. But first, he had to open his heart and that's when another energy asked to have the opportunity to speak with Vince. I thought this was unusual too, and waited to see who it would be. And it was Archangel Raphael who shared that he would help Vince open his heart and he would use blue-eyed, red-haired people. This energy gently and humorously told Vince stories that would soften and tear down the walls of protection Vince had built around his heart these last 50 years. To really get Vince's attention, he knew Vince was alone on a shopping trip in Walmart several days prior, where a red-headed, blue-eyed child nearly fell out of his stroller reaching out for Vince. Only Vince, the baby's mother, the baby, and this angel knew that this had happened. I believed it was at this point that Vince became a true believer. 
Archangel Michael had gently but directly pierced the walls of Vince's heart and created an environment where his mind felt safe to listen. Now these stories were touching Vince's heart and giving his mind things to look for, such as signs and symbols. This went on for quite a while until the sun god Ra spoke with Vince and finally a fourth energy stream. As the channeling came to a close, I think all four of us were exhausted and exhilarated at the same time. It isn't every day you have the privilege of watching someone have an experience like this one. But these energies came in with all the love of the universe, and while they expertly held him, they birthed a new awareness in Vince and changed his life forever. Yes, he believed, he knew. He dropped all pretense of the weapons he carried into this battle and knew his mind had been defeated and his heart had been the victor. His heart had known this all, all along, and finally it had the new fertile ground to be awake to his mission on earth. We all stood up, profusely thanked Aloria, and like being transformed after a perfect massage, made our way to the car. Once locked in the car safely away from the outside world, I couldn't contain myself any longer and said, So Vince, what do you think? And Vince replied, I think my life has changed forever. I've got a lot to think about and I'm hungry. Not only had his life changed, but so had mine. Now I was committed we became inseparable other than our separate work duties. The time we had with the energies at Aloria's was all I needed to move forward. And as he describes in the book, we knew we were meant to be together. In chapter 17, the round table presents this passage. The people that come and go in your life all assist you in your learning, growing and expanding. Each relationship is co-created to provide the experience needed for you to step into your chosen mission, your reason for being. One significant person that came into our lives a couple of years later was Diane. We recognized immediately that her knowledge of essential oils and her abilities to work with energy was the next step for both of us. Not only was she a teacher, but a friend. We spent a year each week receiving energy treatments from Diane. We knew she would give rise to raising the vibration of our bodies. Diane and I spent many hours of each week together. She became not only a guide for me to open me up to my own capacity as an energy worker, but she also became a confidant. She and one other, my dear friend Kathy, were both significant in my life. It was Kathy that coached me through finding the gifts in my divorce and coached me to start envisioning a more empowered life as a partner and a businesswoman. Part of my vision was to own a retreat center. Meanwhile, Vince was continuing his study of quantum physics and gaining confidence in the most synchronistic ways to express his newfound spirituality and of being supported by his friends and mentors. I hope today's episode gave you a broader insight into the section of the book I covered. We all have personal journeys and they are very different, yet they have the same common thread. We are called to wake up and listen to our messages to grow and expand. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about what it was like to be in relationship with someone who was tapping into the unseen realms in the wee hours of the night while I slept. Until our next time together, please enjoy the book. 
You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to themiracleyou.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's themiracleyou.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.